end the season by being paraded, socially distanced, I guess, somewhere near Goodison Park. We'll find out before too long. This is what else has been going on over the last few days. And as you can see, of the six teams already through now to the quarterfinals, five of them aside from the Premier League. And you can see Wolves against Southampton. That's 5.30 tomorrow evening here on BT Sport. Barnsley also play Chelsea to round off all the games in the FA Cup fifth round. And then we've got more football coming your way. We've got completely crazy. It must have felt like that playing. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was too open-ended. Uh, too many goals. Uh, probably good to watch. Not going to lie. Uh, but uh, fantastic uh, to come back. Uh, conceded, I think, three goals probably from corners or set pieces, which is uh, something we need to have a look at and work on. But the spirit in the team to to come back and and eventually. Uh, go through is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a long time ago, but you were pretty slow coming out of the blocks, weren't you? They, they dominated for that first 30 minutes. Yeah, I think um, really slow. Um, kind of caught in between pressing and, and sitting back, and uh, they they took advantage of that and um, were much much better in the first 20, 20 30 minutes. But I think after that, uh, after our goal, um, we kind of came out a little bit and obviously got the 3 1 lead. But um, Disappointed to concede just before half time. Yeah, a huge turnaround, seven and a half minutes. The game turned on its head. It was a seesaw game all the way through, wasn't it? Really? <laughs> yeah, it was. As I said, it was probably fantastic to to sit at home and, and watch the game. But uh, I think for our liking, it was too open. Uh, but a fantastic cup, cup game, and obviously uh, fantastic to be still yeah. be in the in the competition. Penalty and a couple of assists against an old, your old club, of course, as well. It helps. Yeah, it's uh, so special to play uh, play Tottenham. Um, Love the club, fantastic players and, and staff, and, and the fans were really good. So um, it's nice to nice to see everyone here again. But uh, uh, most important thing, we're we're still in the competition. Yeah, everyone take a deep breath and you get through into the next round. Goals for his side tonight. He was involved in four of them. We'll look at the goals. We'll talk about him specifically in a minute. But that's what you want from an FA Cup game: two sides just going at each other for for two hours. Perfect. Yeah, definitely. You asked us what we'd get from the game today. We weren't quite sure because no. the consistency hasn't been there with Spurs. You didn't know how they'd come out, especially with Harry Kane on the bench. But boy, we got a, a fantastic game. Great spectacle. And a good advert for in, the English game as well. And it shows you actually that the FA Cup means something to these teams. And people sometimes doubt that. But I think the players in general, they all know what this means. They all want to win it, get their hands on it. And for their clubs, it's great. Yeah, let's just talk about that just for a second then. Because we've people have been talking about how oh, the FA Cup's done for the last 10 years. Mm. As players, did you ever feel that? Was there ever that feeling that the FA Cup wasn't not, what it used to be? Not for me. That was the biggest thing. The biggest transition for me, especially at City, was that trophy. Yeah. Um, Growing up, I never dreamt about winning the Premier League. It was the FA Cup was the biggest honour, kind of, because it was realistic towards that. And then that was the transition. That was the first trophy we won in, what, 35 years. And it propelled us on to then be contenders the following season. So winning this trophy is prestigious, like, like Rio said, and it propels you on to, to the higher level. And, and that's what I th I'm sure that these two clubs, especially, would have been thinking. They're, they're clubs that see themselves on that next rung down, probably, from the te teams that fight for the championship at the moment. And this could be something that will maybe elevate them to that next, next uh, stage where they have the mindset that we can win, we understand how to win, and go on to then challenge for maybe championships. But it, it comes in stages, and this is definitely a big part in that, as Jolion said. Yeah, and they both need to just taste some form of silverware because that is, you know, that is what makes you crave it more when you kind of get into those moments. And you know, as Jolion says, it kind of propels you and makes you, uh, you know, believe you can go on and do more. And these, these, both of these clubs haven't had that yet. None of these players haven't had that. And they're, they're desperate for it. And I think tonight we watched a game where I felt like everyone left it out there. You yeah. know, even the players that didn't play that well, they left their heart and soul out there and gave us everything, um, you know, to win the game. I don't think you could, you can criticise mistakes, but you can't criticise the work rate of both sides tonight. Mm. Three wins, Jolie, and your old club. Three wins away from lifting a trophy. I know you got super close back in 2009. Let's mention then Gilfie Sigurdsson. We heard from him there. I mean, he was brilliant this evening. Three assists and a goal. I guess when you do that against a former club as well, it just feels a little bit more special. Yeah, definitely. I think the composure from the penalty was nice, but the board he played to Bernard, um, exquisite, um, again, late in the game. And obviously tired, fatigue minds, legs, um, but he's a bit of class and created the winning opportunity for, for Everton. Let's have a look at it, Rio. Here it is. Yeah, and listen, at the end of the day, sometimes when people are getting tired, it's about pouncing on mistakes. Harry Winks gets caught on the ball there, and then it's about the next wave of, of attack. Um, they come inside, you see, it's composure out here, that's what I like. They're not, they're not rushing things. The ball comes, you see the little look he has around him. He, wasn't, he spins at Deli Alley, and it's off his left foot, his weaker foot, which you wouldn't expect. 
Well, well, then it's about the finish. He lets it run across his body. What a bit of movement that is. Spins around, then faces the play and has the speed of thought. And then the, the technique to come execute. And then it's all about the finish. Great finish. I think from a Spurs point of view, it was, it was poor goal to concede. Mm. You know, I think Doherty can see the run clearly of Bernard inside him. He's either got to block the run or go with him. Um, I think, that, again, it's just fatigue. Yeah. Sometimes as a player, you, you get into a situation, you just hope. Because you're that tired, don't you? You just yeah. think, oh, you know, I hope from a few years ago when Arsenal lost and shipped a load of goals and he described it as, a, he said, that's a hockey score. That's not a football score. Mm -hmm. It was a hockey score tonight. His team were on the receiving end of it. What's, what's the plan for him now, do you think, for lifting well, the players from this? You know what? Like, he gets, he gets criticised, Jose Mourinho, for the way he plays a lot of the time. You know, we've sat in here myself and kind of gone, look, they need to play more expansive. They need to open up. And Well, he's kind of done that today. Mm. But look at the results. He, he can't, he doesn't feel like he can trust them defensively. And when I say that, I don't mean just the back four, you know, the goalkeepers involved in that, the midfield too, whatever it is, you don't feel like he can trust them. But that was, you know, the, him opening up and trying to play, you know, uh, expressive football because they were, I suppose, entertaining and enjoyable to watch, but not going to win anything like that clearly today, as we've seen. Well, let's see what he says. Gareth Bale is completely missing from the Tottenham squad to play Everton in the FA Cup tonight. Bale is not even among the substitutes as his English football return continues to go from bad to worse. While the reason for Bale's exclusion is unknown at this stage, it comes less than 24 hours after he posted a message on Instagram saying good session today, after Spurs' final full training session before the game. That seemingly positive mood seems to have been premature. Bale has struggled to break into Tottenham's team under Jose Mourinho, and this latest development has left many fans bemused. While Bale has failed to produce when given opportunities, Spurs supporters would still like to see him given a run of games to prove he still has some of the capabilities that propelled him to stardom. Earlier this week, former Wales boss Chris Coleman urged people not to write Bale off just yet. He's been out for a long time and he's finding it hard to get back in and get his rhythm, Coleman said on Monday Night Football. We all know what a world-class player he is. He can win a game, he can score a goal from nothing, he's got a last pass. But when I'm watching him now it looks like he's always on his first game back after an injury. Obviously, we expected him to be in the flow of it by now, but he clearly isn't. He's only 31 so I wouldn't write him off. I don't know what's happened at Tottenham, but knowing Gareth, he's a very serious boy about his football, and he loves playing football. He will very much want to be in the heart of it, and if he's not quite there yet, he's either not ready physically or maybe mentally there's a lack of confidence.